Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you and worship you, honor you, bless you. Lord, if there are other words that we even had in our vocabulary now, I would add them. We love you. We love you. Father, it's a, it is a joy. It is a privilege. I believe even as a, as a follower of Jesus Christ, it's a responsibility for us to just pause today, to start our day under the waterfall of your word. Yeah. And so, Father, your word will be, will be proclaimed here in the next few minutes. And, uh, Father, I, I pray that each of us sitting under the hearing of it will be affected and impacted in a way that takes us out of this place a few minutes from now, looking a whole lot more like Jesus when we walk out than what we look like coming in. So, Lord, have your way. I pray for the same thing in our groups that are meeting in North KC today, for uh, our Overland Park group, uh, Lord, for other groups that are meeting. I, I, Lord, I just pray that you would, your presence would be felt and uh, men's lives would be affected today, today, Lord. Use us wherever we go. May our eyes, spiritual eyes and ears be on the ready. So, Lord, we're asking you to fill us up and wear us out for your glory. We love you. We praise you. But we thank you that you first loved us. We pray this in Christ's name. All God's men said, amen. 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 All right. Hey, amen. welcome Scott Stanger here, guys. Fasten your seatbelts, boys and girls. <clears throat> uh, one word. You know, I think this is the third year in a row that I've given this, this uh, message, and um, it's, it's almost 20 years that I've been doing the one word. And uh, just over the years, this little book of one word that will change your life has changed my life. And uh, I buy it. Oh, I forgot to bring some books in here. When, as soon as I'm finished, I'll run out and I'll grab some books. Um, I've, I've got these. They retail for twenty dollars a piece. Uh, I, I give them away like Johnny Appleseed. You know, just throws them out. I've got buy them by the case, and I'll, I'll sell them for ten dollars. But if you don't have ten dollars, just take one. I, I want you to see your life changed, and and uh, your family, and your business, and and every place that God's given you influence. So I'll run out and grab those uh, as soon as I'm done here. But. <clears throat> This, this time of the year, I mean, it's not just at TGIW that I reshare this message. It's at my church. It's at, at business groups. Uh, it's in the executive team that I coach in, in Acumen. Uh, it's all over. So I just, I, I almost feel like I'm just a tape recorder that just is coming in here and hit play. But it's, it's, a, it's a powerful way that God can uh, come into your heart. I, I call it the on-ramp the on-ramp to the highway of what he wants to do in your life. Now, one word is not exalted above God's word, okay? I want to make that so clear. Sometimes people say, Scott, sounds like you talk about this so much that you're saying it's above God's word. No, it's not. It's just like I said, it's, it, God can use this one word as an on-ramp into his word and a deeper walk with him. 20 years ago, this one word concept or practice or whatever you want to call it uh, was, was taught to me by a man named John Shore. Uh, I'm sure many of you in this room know John Shore. John Shore uh, passed away, went to glory last year. I think he was close to 90 years old. Rod was uh, a pallbearer in his funeral. He even spoke in his funeral. John Shore was a successful businessman in Kansas City, had Shore tires. He and his his family, his brother, uh, owned and operated Shore Tires, and uh, then he sold out of the business, and he went and became an executive at FCA. And these guys who wrote this book, uh, John Gordon, Dan Britton, and Jimmy Page, Dan Britton is a good friend of mine, they're, they're associated. Dan is, a, is a, an executive VP at uh, FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I came to Christ through FCA in high school, at Raytown High School back in uh, 1980. And <clears throat> FCA has always held a, a, a special place in my heart because of that, that ministry. And my business at the time, my family's construction business, Stanger Industries, is close to the sports complex, 
where FCA is headquartered. And so John Shore would, uh, as a, this uh, VP of, of FCA, would drop in regularly into my office and just have a cup of coffee or sometimes we'd have lunch. And year after year, around this time, he would share with me the one word. Uh, and as well, John had a, um, each week he sent out an email that was kind of a, you know, before we had blogs, uh, he would send out this devotional email and uh, just tell these incredible stories of growing up out in the country in a farm and going downtown and, and going to the matinee uh, movie theaters and, and uh, the drugstore and this and that. And each year he would tell this, have this one email that would go out to thousands of, of recipients talking about the one word. And uh, then he would usually show up in my office a few weeks later and, and say, Scott, you got your one word? And I'd say, yeah, yeah, I do, John. And it's this and that. But I, I, I'll be honest, the first four or five years that he was doing this and, and coming and, and uh, visiting with me and talking about the one word, I, was, I would do it at the beginning of the year and then I would just kind of lose track of it. It was like, uh, well, that was a nice little thing. You know, maybe I did it in a devotional time on a Saturday morning or something. But uh, by, the, by the end of the month or a few months later, I didn't exactly remember what it was. I'd have to dig through my notes someplace or journal to find it. But then something happened. You know, it was a, it was a culmination of the book being published uh, as well as uh, seeing John and seeing the fruit that the one word had in his life and, and the way it, uh, he used it to impact people. I got on board. I, I jumped in with both feet and uh, just started bringing it to my employees and bringing it to customers and vendors and so on. So that's the background of one word. But you see the title of this message here, <laughs> two words. So what is it, Scott? Are you, you schizophrenic or something here? Uh, it, it, what is it? Is it one word or is it two words? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's one word twice. Uh, so let me review one word. Then in the famous words of Paul Harvey, I'll give you the rest of the story. <clears throat> That's a terrible Paul Harvey impersonation. What is one word? Okay, well, I heard, I heard uh, last year that after I did this one word message, um, that there were some guys that ended up in the ER with a severe writer's cramp because I had so many fill in the blanks on here. So Rod, uh, Rod said, Scott, limit it to 15. So I, I exactly did that. <laughs> so I've cut down on the fill in the blanks this year and nobody's gonna have severe writer's cramp and in the ER. So I'm gonna jump into a couple of the, the first fill-ins right here. One word is life focusing. Life focusing. It's number one there. It's life orientating. Life orientating. And the third fill in, it's life amplifying. Life amplifying pursuit you can enjoy for a lifetime. Let me, let me unpack those three words a little bit. Focusing. You know, we got light in the room here. And if you take that light and you narrow it down and focus it so much, it becomes a laser beam. And a laser beam can cut through steel. It can cut through stone. Focused. One word helps you get that focus and, and so that you become more powerful in what you're, you're trying to accomplish in life, what God wants to do through you. Orientating. Okay, we've all been to one of those big shopping centers or amusement park, and, and maybe one of the first things we do when we get there is we look for that big sign that says, you are here. It orientates us to where we are versus where we want to be. So that's what one word can do. God can use this one word to orientate you and where you are on his journey for your life. Lastly, amplifying. Well, I'm a former sound engineer. I, I was formerly with a band and travel, Christian band, and traveled around for three years and ran the sound system. And so I understand firsthand uh, how a sound system works. And one of the important components in a sound system is the amplifier. 
An amplifier simply takes a little signal and through power, it magnifies that signal and amplifies it. And so that's what one word can do. It can be those three things. It can be focusing for you. It can be orientating and it can be amplifying. 80% of us will have forgotten or given up on our New Year's resolution by the end of this month. I'm not against New Year's resolutions. I've done them many times, failed and succeeded. Uh, and, and they're important. <clears throat> but one word is far more than a New Year's resolution. It's, it's not just, oh, I'm going to pick up this new habit or I'm going to change part of my lifestyle. No, it is, it is something that I call it as a, it's a gift. It's a gift from God. It's like, it's like the thread of the, that God uses to weave into the tapestry of your life uh, in the coming season, especially. So one word is something that you do every year. It's not, um, it's not just a once a month or, or whatever. It's, it's a once a year thing that you can go through this practice. One of the uh, former Kansas City Chiefs chaplains was on a local talk show uh, talking about the one word. And by the way, this, this one word thing, this book has sold hundreds of thousands of copies. It's been featured on Good Morning America and the Today Show. And even last month in December, it was featured by one of the writers in Inc. Magazine, which is a popular business publication for business owners and entrepreneurs. And they were talking about how it's changed their life. Well, this, this chaplain, Casey uh, Chief's chaplain, told a story about a lion tamer. When a lion tamer goes into that cage to tame that lion, they take three things in there. They take a whip, you know, that they're cracking to, to, to uh, make it move around and do the things that they wanted to do. They take a gun as a last resort, we understand that. But they also take something, a, a, a four-legged stool. A four-legged stool. Now, why in the world would a lion tamer take something like a four-legged stool into a cage with this wild beast? It's because it's been discovered that that's too much for the lion to take in. There's, there's too much here. It, it like paralyzes them with too much. And that's part of the, the concept behind the one word. It simplifies things. You know, we can have all these goals, these, these BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals, wigs, wildly important goals, all these to-dos and so on in life. But sometimes it just becomes a little too much. It's like that four-legged stool that it's like we're just stuck in the moment. We can't, we can't go forward. One word simplifies that. Helps become that, that one thing that recalibrates you to true north constantly, every day, every week, every month throughout the year. Let me read this short little introduction in the, in the beginning of the book. Uh, by the way, they, they'll tell you, the authors say that you can read this book in about less than an hour, I think 49 minutes to be exact. I, I believe that's true. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's big print, it's only a few pages, but there are so many sentences and paragraphs in here that sometimes they just stop you dead in your tracks and you'll think about that question for 49 minutes as you just ponder God and ponder what he's doing in your life. <clears throat> but listen to this. If we could give you one thing that would improve your life in incredible ways, would you receive it? If this one thing was so intuitive and easy to use that you'd be crazy not to try it, would you give it a shot? What is this one thing? Well, it's just one word. That's right. One word that will change your life. In this book, we will show you how to discover the word that is meant for you. It's your one word vision or theme for the entire year, and it will help you become the person you were born to be. When we first discovered this simple concept in 1999, we never imagined thousands of people would experience life change year after year. However, over the years, we have witnessed others experiencing the same life change we've experienced. We came to realize that we had to share this life-changing concept with as many people as possible. And that's why they wrote this book. And by the way, in the back of the book, it, and, and on their website as well, which is referenced there on the, uh, at the top of the, the handout, uh, they give story after story of how organizations, churches, 
school districts, professional sports teams, uh, businesses, and so on have embraced one word. I know I have in, in my businesses, and, and we, would, we would hand this out to every single employee. Uh, and even throughout the year, as, as somebody would be hired in June or July or August, we would still give them a copy of one word so that they could join in what we were doing. And we would have a big poster, write out the one word for every employee and so on. So this is, this is something that's powerfully affecting uh, people uh, 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 in organizations all around the country. Okay, you might say, oh, Scott, can, can God really use just one word? One word? Come on, that sounds a little too, too simple. Uh, well, let me give you a couple of scriptures here, and these are your next fill in the blanks. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Next scripture and fill ins, Joshua 23, 14. And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one word of all the good words which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed. Not one word of all the good words the Lord your God spoke has failed. Well, to me, that, that, that says, yeah, God can use one word. He can you do that. So how does it, how's it work? What's the process? All right. It's a, it's a three-part process. Uh, first step, and this is your next fill in the blank. First step is prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. Look in. By the way, we're going to do this. Here at the end of a talk, I'm going to give us five minutes, and, and we're just going to step into a moment of five minutes of silence and doing this process. Those of you who don't have your one word, just use it as a beginning step, a beginning step. But we're going to do this here in a, in a few minutes. Preparing your heart is the most rewarding and revealing part of the one word experience. It includes posturing your heart with humility and gratitude to be good soil. You may remember uh, a few months ago, one of my messages I gave was called Good Posture. And I talked about how a heart has four chambers to it. And, and I said that over the years in my, my devotion time with the Lord, I, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, attach four different words to this four different chambers of the heart. The first being humility, and then gratitude and obedience. And faith, and that has been something that is constantly, as I, as I begin my day and I come before the Lord, I posture my heart with those four things, literally doing this, humility, gratitude, obedience, and faith. And, uh, and I shared about that. You can see that on the YouTube if you want to go back, good posture. But that's, part, that's what this first part is about. It's about posturing our heart with humility and gratitude to be good soil for the seed of his word to be sown. And then there are two easy steps in this first part. There's two easy steps. This is next fill in. Step A, unplug. Whew. Right here. This and, and just life, the busyness, the craziness of life. We got to unplug. It's the simplest, yet it's the hardest thing to do. But out of silence comes power. Out of silence comes power. Next, step B, ask. Ask. The authors give three questions that they suggest of what do I need? What's in my way? And what needs to go? What do I need? What's in my way? And what needs to go? Those are great questions processing, and I've used them for years. But over the years, I've added these, these three questions of where am I? And, and more importantly, who am I? But most importantly, who are you, God? Not, not to reduce God, but he's like an onion. <laughs> there's more and more layers to peel. 
and to discover more about him each and every day. Okay, next part is discover, discover your word. In other words, look up. So you're doing this examination, you're preparing your heart, but then, then there's a moment where you start to discover your word. You look up to God. As you ask the questions, you listen for an answer. And that's what we'll be doing a little bit. We'll just be asking the questions and listening for an answer. And you listen for a specific word. You know, a word just comes to you. It's like last year when I did this message, and I, as I was praying at the close of it, uh, I used the word momentum, and for something, and, and Rod back there in the, in the back of the room, just boom, he knew that was his one word. It just, it just, you just kind of hear a ding or something that just tells you, you know, you know, you know, that's, that's it. So my wife and I, we begin the one word process uh, in December, I, I specifically, I start Thanksgiving holiday. That's a, that's a time that's easy and it, it just marks out. And what does that mean? That means I start reflecting back on the past year, looking at how God used one word through, uh, through that year. And, um, and I, I, then I start slowly, but surely I come to a place later on in the month where I'm pivoting instead of looking through the rearview mirror of what God did in the past year, I start looking through the windshield to say, well, God, what is it you want to do in this next year? But we call December downshift December, uh, where she and I together on our Saturday mornings, uh, we, we're there having our quiet times and we, we downshift into a lower, slower gear to be very intentional to talk about what God's doing in us and through us and our family and, and so on. And we, we come into this place of, of listening, listening for the Holy Spirit to give us this next chapter of our life, uh, especially during that week or uh, from Christmas to New Year's is when we become extremely intentional about it. Sometimes, you know, she's off for work. I'm off for work as well. And so we'll touch base quite a bit. This year, we did something completely different. Some friends of ours from, from Waco, when we lived down there, um, he's a retired professor at Baylor. He, they called us and said, Scott, we have loved that one word that you shared with us years ago. We've, we've shared it with all of our family members. We now have been doing this for 10 plus years. Um, how about we go on a spiritual retreat together and do our, our share of one word uh, and, and pray over our families uh, for this coming year? And so we drove down and met them at a bed and breakfast outside of Nashville over the New Year's uh, three days. And we just use that at time as a time of fellowship and, and uh, reconnecting our friendship and praying over one another and doing this, sharing our journals and, and our one word experience. And it was awesome. Never done that before, but uh, it, was a, it was a fabulous experience. Okay, when you get this one word, you know, here we are, we're already more than two weeks into the new year. So you might, you might already have your one word. But if, if this is a new process to you, you haven't done this, I, I encourage you, when you hear something Put it on like a garment and kind of wear it around for 24 hours or so and say, does this one word fit me? Does this word of uh, disciple or love or peace or compassion, whatever it might be, does it, is that really it? But I, I would encourage you to do something else. Uh, use some tools like a dictionary. Look up variations of that word. Look up, use a thesaurus. Almost 100% of the time, when I've um, found my one word, it's never the first word. It's usually that first word is sort of the, the gate, the entrance, or the stepping stone that God uses to get me ultimately to the one word. There's some other things you can do to help you uh, confirm it or find it, um, and that is you can Google. Just Google that word right there and see what comes up in the search results. Go to YouTube and uh, search there on that one word. You might find some short little videos or sermons or something that help you discover ultimately what God wants to do in you and through you in this one word. Okay, last, last part here. <clears throat> Live your word. Live your word. Look out. You know, you've examined your heart. Looked in, you've looked up, God's given you word. Now it's time to go out and live out your word. Incorporate your one word into your devotional time. Uh, create reminders 
to trip over your word. How do, how do I do that? Well, I put my one word. I've got a, a personal vision, mission, value statement. And I print it on bright green paper. And I print off multiple copies of this thing. So I trip over my word all over the place. I stick it in my Bible. I stick it in my notebook. I stick it in the door of my truck. So when I get in and out of my truck, I see that bright green paper. And I'm reminded of what God wants to do in me and through me. And over the 15 to 20 years that I've been doing this, I've just accumulated things in here that I've seen God do in my life that, that speaks to me like, well, these are my values. This is my purpose. This is my the God's vision for my life. And so on my little page that I use, uh, I capture those things over, over 15 or 20 years. But down on the bottom of the page is my one word with some scriptures that go along with it, or maybe some, some uh, clarification or understanding of it. And then on the back of the page, I actually have chronicled every single one word for the last 15 plus years with a summary sentence. And wow, I am so glad that God, uh, God inspired me to do this because now I can see a pattern. I can see what he's doing in my life and, and uh, a trajectory. And it's, it's just wonderful. It's encouraging when sometimes when we get down and, and we can have something like this. So I encourage you to do this. Trip over your, your one word. For instance, I have this bright green sheet of paper sitting right there by my alarm clock. So in the morning when that thing goes off, I reach over. And the first thing I feel as I hit that button is I feel this piece of paper. And I'm reminded, God, thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in me and through me. And I jump out of bed ready to go. All right. Um, there's a, uh, an African proverb. And this is your next fill in the blank. that says, if you want to go fast go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And you know, I can certainly say that's true. Uh, as we did the one word with this other couple uh, a, a few weeks ago, it was powerful to do that with them. Okay, now for Paul Harvey's, the rest of the story, uh, how two words became one word then became two words. What? All right. <clears throat> so last year, by the way, this message has been rated by the uh, motion picture industry as G. Not for general audiences, G for guys. Because I'm going to share something that is, I, all I can tell you is this is a way my one word came to me last year. And uh, you might go, hmm, I don't know about that. Well, my one word last year was S H blank T. <laughs> All right, there we go. There's a giggle over there. S H blank T. I know if we stick I in there, we know what it spells and we know how it smells. But if we will stick Abba in that blank, Abba is the Hebrew word for daddy or papa. Jesus referred to his heavenly father over and over and over as Abba. If we will put Abba in that, we will get Shabbat, which is the Hebrew word for Sabbath or rest. You might remember last year I did a little message called we'll work for and I had these these blanks and I held up a sign and unfortunately we drive around our city and and we see lots of people stand on street corners say we'll work for we're used to seeing food this is this is what really fits in there because Hebrews chapter 4 became uh, the the centerpiece passage for me last year Hebrews chapter 4 talks about entering into the rest of God 4.11 says, be diligent. In other words, work hard to enter into God's race, rest. And we're not talking about eternal rest. And we're not talking about a once a week Sabbath. We're talking about a rest that Jesus invites us into. Remember, he said, all you who are weary and heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest for I am gentle and humble of heart. And so I discovered last year, you know, I'm a, a, a former CEO and I now uh, coach CEOs and, and business owners. 
And I'm a type A personality, driven, uh, going to go out there and we're going to set up plans and strategies and blah, blah, blah. And we're going to accomplish this and that. Well, that's all good. It has its place. But there's, you know what that can lead to? That can lead to striving and mm, I'm going to make it come hell or high water. We're going to make this happen. That's not what we're invited into. Jesus invites us into a place of rest walking with him. He invites us into a place of Shabbat. And if we will bring our heavenly father into this SH, you know, we'll find rest. We'll find Shabbat. And that's what I found this past year. And in fact, you know, I said two words. Well, they wrote a sequel to this book here. The one word, the authors wrote a sequel called Life Word. And that's where one word becomes a, a word that is overarching over your whole life. And I discovered, they actually gave me the, uh, copies of this book a few years ago when it first came out. And to tell you the truth, I was afraid to read it. I just felt like, gosh, I just don't know enough. I'm not, I, I'm not ready for my one thing that really defines me. I'm too afraid that I'll, I'll get something that's here where God wants something here. Well, this past year, my one word uh, that started out as two words, my one word became my life word. And I can tell you, this was so life-changing for me this past year. It, 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 it radically tr transformed me to, to be more productive, if you will. I mean, I found a lower, slower year every single day, not just in downshift to December. And uh, I'm, I'm more present in my relationships. I, I'm more at peace. Uh, I've found, as I call it, a, a pace of grace. And so I am so thrilled that God has given me this word, this life word of Shabbat. My new nickname is Shabbat Scott. And a friend of mine, uh, he he actually produces these little bracelets. And I think a couple of years ago when I first gave this, this one word message, somebody in, in this group uh, was so inspired by it, they went out and made these little bracelets as well as everybody's one word. I'm going to wear this bracelet the rest of my life. Shabbat Scott, be a, constantly reminded to be in this place of rest in every situation, every conversation, every organization that God brings me into, be in a place of Shabbat Scott. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, I, I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time on this. In fact, I'm going to spend zero time almost. But my word for 2022 is Comria. Comria. K U M R E A. It's too much to unpack here in, in the amount of time left, but it's Aramaic for royal priesthood or king priest. And it's interesting how Hebrews chapter four that talks about rest then leads the way, it opens the door for the next three chapters of five, six, and seven about the royal priesthood of Melchizedek. So later on this, this year, as God unfolds more of Cumria and what that means, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to unpack that. You know, one of my favorite Proverbs is 25.2, and it says that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. And so I'm looking forward to searching out this Cumria one word and discovering what is its purpose, this king priest, royal priesthood of Melchizedek. What is the purpose that this would be my one word for the year? I don't have the full answer to that right, right now, but I will. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Last part. Let's listen for the one word together. We're going to have five minutes of silence here <clears throat> in just a moment. But let me give you these, these scriptures. Um, to uh, kind of grease the gears with grace, as I like to say. Grease the gears with grace with God's word. Psalm 85, 8. I will give ear to the voice of the Lord, for he will say words of peace to his people. So as we lean into this, these five minutes, he will give peace to us as we listen for his voice. Psalm 130, verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. Posture your heart with humility and gratitude to be good soil. Go through the ask questions and listen. Remember Psalm 46, I think it's verse 10. It says, 
Be still and know that I am God. That's what we're going to do here for five minutes. God, God's not a, you know, he's not like a spigot that you turn him on and turn it off. But we can come boldly into his presence, into his throne of grace. He's a good father. He's Abba. He's Papa. He wants to love his children. This one word is like a, a gift, uh, a, a package that he's wrapped and placed under the, the Christmas tree for us. And he's eager to see us tear into it, just like we are for our children and grandchildren. So what do you need? What's in my way? What needs to go? Where am I? Who am I? God, who are you? I'm going to pray a short prayer here. And I'm going to count three, two, one, and we're going to have five minutes of silence. And then I'm just going to, all you're going to do is just write down a word, whatever comes to mind or words. And uh, then it's going to be like popcorn in here. Just sh- uh, uh, when we resume, you're just going to shout it out. Just shout it out. Okay. So, Father, thank you for this opportunity to come and to share to these men this morning. Um, I pray that you would help us, Holy Spirit, to posture our hearts with humility and gratitude. Make us the good soil that Abba Father can sow his seed into our hearts and get a good return, a 30, a 60, and a hundredfold return. Father, we've been created in your likeness. That includes our emotions, our intellect, and our imagination. So right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would sanctify those aspects of us, uh, our, our intellect, our emotions, especially our imagination. Sanctify them as we pause and listen, lean in to hear what do you have to say to us for this coming year, this one word that helps us to, to, to focus and orientate and amplify. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Three. Two, one. Thank you, Father. Okay. <clears throat> Who wants to shout something out? <clears throat> What was that last one? Turn. Turn. Like left hand, right hand turn. Yeah, it's good. That's awesome. Listen. Hmm. Transform. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I just want to shout something out. Fortitude. Fortitude. Well. Wow. Well, these are great words. Uh, just l- l- reading down the list from yesterday, things like Rod's identity and um, intergenerational integrity, blessed, steadfast, turn, transform, listen, attentive, fortitude, powerful. Now, you know, God's giving you something. We're not just hearers of the word that it just doesn't go in one ear and out the other or in one side of our heart and out the other. We're to be doers of his word. We're to give him a good return on his investment. So I want to challenge each of us to go out and remember, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Go and share your one word, either amongst here, but share it with your spouse or with family members or someone at work. Encourage them to do the same thing. You can go right there to that website and they're easy tools. You don't have to have the book. They're easy tools for somebody to repeat this process and discover the one word together. Go together. You'll go much further. 
So, Father, thank you for this time we've had together. We just pray that you will seal these things in our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit, and we will give you a good return on your investment, that we will be doers, doers of your word, not just hearers. We give you all the praise and the glory and the honor in your son's Jesus' name. Amen and amen.